السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا وبعد قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولكل قوم هاد وقال تعالى وإن من أمة إلا خلا فيها نذير صدق الله صدق الله العظيم حميدا ومصليا متوكلا على الله وبعد respected brothers elders and sisters in Islam we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us and being here today on this blessed and sacred day to perform our salat al jumuah I hope and pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our coming and may Allah reward us both in dunya and akhirah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the seal of prophets he came as the last Nabi, the last Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the chains of prophets. Before him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets to every nation, every tribe, every qawm, every community, every society. As Allah says, لِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ had For every qawm, for every nation, for every people, there was someone to guide them. وَإِن مِّنْ أُمَّةٍ إِلَّا خَلَى فِيهَا النَّذِيرٍ Every Nabi that came into this world, at the time of their leaving, there was a consolation in their hearts that after me, another Nabi will come. Another Prophet was come, will come. So there was some consolation, there was some satisfaction in the heart of that Nabi that after me, someone else will come and take over from where I left off. But the, finally, the pride of humanity, the pride of Allah's creation, that Nabuwa, that prophethood, which differed from every other Nabuwa, which differed from every other prophethood, that prophethood that transcended the barriers of race, creed, nationalism, color, nationality, which also transcended the boundaries of time and age. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْفُرْقَانَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ لِيَكُونَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ نَذِيرًا Allah says in another ayat of the Quran, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not only sent as a universal Nabi and a universal prophet to insan and to human being, but his nabuwa and his prophethood was also towards jinn kind. وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ other than that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Nabi and the Prophet of even the animate and inanimate objects. Not only towards insan, not towards only jinn kind, but also to every creation, whether it be animate or an inanimate object. So much so that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was injured in the battle of Uhud, and uh, they took refuge on the Mount of Uhud. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaned against the Mount of Uhud, that portion on which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took support upon, that portion of the mountain on which he leaned it upon became soft like a cushion for him. Mountains are hard objects. But because the Prophet's body touched that part of the mountain, which is an inanimate object, that, that, that mountain also itself became soft 
and acted as a cushion for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu anhu narrates that. Um, مَسْتَقْبَلَ حَجَرٌ وَلَا شَجَرٌ وَلَا مَدَرْ إِلَّا قَالَ السلام عليك يا رسول الله رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he would pass by a rock, a tree, a heap of sand and you would hear those are also inanimate objects you would hear them saying السلام عليك يا رسول الله رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم was the only Nabi of Allah who said also أنا نبي الأنبياء that I am not only a Nabi to human beings, but my prophethood is also for other prophets. My prophethood is also to other prophets. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I said, he was sent as a Nabi to even the animals. On one occasion, it is mentioned that one shepherd, he was looking after his sheep. And a wolf tried to devour the sheep, tried to attack the sheep. And the shepherd repelled the wolf, chased it away. And uh, after repelling the wolf, the wolf spoke to the shepherd. The wolf spoke to the shepherd. And the wolf told the shepherd, Why are you becoming an obstacle between me and my rizq? Why are you becoming an obstacle between me and my sustenance? So the shepherd was shocked. He was astonished to hear... A wolf speaking, a wolf speaking in the language of a human. How can this be possible? That an animal is speaking the language of a human being. So when he, when he showed this, this amazement, the wolf spoke to him. The wolf spoke to him and told him, You are amazed to hear me speaking the language of human being, but should I tell you something much more amazing than that? You want to hear something that is much more amazing than that? So the shepherd said, what can be more amazing than that? And the wolf said, Anta a'jabu min dhalik. You, you are more amazing than that. You, me? How can I be more amazing than that? He said, surprising to say, this wolf is talking now, surprising to say, that behind this mountain, the last Nabi came and he is inviting people towards Islam and you are here looking after your herd of sheep. Instead of you going to listen to him, what he's saying and accept what he's saying, you are here among your, your animals. So this shepherd said, if I go, then who will take care of my herd? Who will take care of my sheep? If I go to listen to, to this Nabi, this last Nabi, and I leave my animals here, who will take care of them? The wolf said, you go and I will take care of them. Subhanallah. You go and I will take care of them. So this shepherd went, he met with the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah invited him towards Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened his heart. He accepted iman, he accepted guidance. And before he came back, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, when you go back, you will see that your herd of sheep will be untouched by this wolf. When you go back, you will see that nothing, no harm uh, had came to them. So this is the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has given to us, right? Uh, a universal prophet, a prophet that was sent to, to every creation, every creation. It comes in, in books of Sirah. That once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was traveling and he had the need to use the bathroom. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had the need to use the bathroom. And there were nothing around whereby he could have used the bathroom. There were some trees far away. There were some tall trees far away. So that Sayyidina Jabir radiallahu anhu at the time was with the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told Jabir, he said, Oh Jabir, that tree and that tree and that tree and that tree. Go and tell them that the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is calling them to make a veil around him so that he can use the bathroom. How amazing was that? Go and tell the trees that the Nabi of Allah is calling them. Jabir radiallahu anhu, he went and he told the trees, he, he, he delivered the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
to the trees that the Nabi of Allah is calling you to make a barrier or make a veil around him so that he can use the bathroom. The trees on hearing this, they all came. Have you ever seen a tree walking? This happened. Trees, not one, more than one. They, they, they walked and they came and made a circle around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whereby Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used the bathroom and after using the bathrooms he told the trees okay now you can go back to your respective places and they all went back to their respective places inanimate objects inanimate objects the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he once returned from when he returned from the battle of Tabuk which was the last expedition he participated in he decided to rest at a place before continuing his journey. And on resting, there was one tree that was very far away. This tree came grading the ground, grading the ground from where it was to where the Prophet ﷺ was resting. It came and it, it looked, it bent its head, the tree bent and was looking at the Prophet. ﷺ. After a while, after it had looked at the Prophet ﷺ enough, Rasulullah was not awake, he was asleep, he did not know what was taking place, what was going on. The tree went back to its place, came from its place, looked at the Prophet ﷺ, had a good glance at him, and went back to its place. When the Prophet ﷺ woke up, Sayyidina Anas anhu was with him. Sayyidina Anas anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, we have seen something very peculiar today that we have never seen before. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what? What did you see? He said, Ya Rasulullah, did you see that tree over there? That tree came walking towards you, looked at you, stayed there for a while and then went back at its place. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he looked at the tree and he told the, the companions that that tree asked Allah's permission. That tree asked Allah for permission to come to me, to have a glance at me and go back to where it was. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him. Allah granted the tree that permission so that it could have come, look at me and go back to where it was. Inanimate objects. Inanimate objects. One day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came out from his house. And when he came out, he saw many sahaba sitting outside. And he asked them, what are you doing here? They said, the O Prophet of Allah, hunger. Hunger brought us out from our home. We haven't eaten for a couple of days. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, I also haven't eaten for a couple of days. As they were talking, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, they also came. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them, why are you also here? They said, Ya Rasulullah, hunger brought us out from our home. Rasulullah, Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, the greatest people, the greatest people, what brought them out from their home? Hunger. Today you look at my refrigerator, I have so much that I can throw away. <coughs> you look at my pantry, I have stocks that can be there for a whole year and I, can, I would not worry. That's the, that's the way we live today, right? That's the way we live today. So, and it was, it was actually winter time. And uh, dates don't bear in winter. The time for the bearing of dates is in the summer, is in the hot season. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, O Ali, go to that date palm tree and tell that date palm tree that the Nabi of Allah is ordering it to give ripe fresh dates. Ripe fresh dates. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu did not use logics. If it was me, it was, for, it was you, we would have started using, running our mind and running our brains and started using logics. That, oh, you know what? We would have said, you know what? Oh, Prophet of Allah, this is a time of winter. Dates don't bear in winter. They only come in summer, right? How would this tree give dates? How would it give dates? Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu did not say that. Huh? Like on one instance, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, the Arabs, when they cook, they used to cook a whole lamb at the same, at one time, or a whole goat or a whole sheep. So one Sahabi, he cooked, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved the front portion of a goat, the, the shoulder portion, the two front portion, he used to eat that meat, he loved that, that portion. So when it was cooked, already cooked, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to this Sahabi and he said, give me one shoulder portion to eat. 
He took it out, the whole entire portion, he gave it to the Prophet ﷺ, and Rasulullah began eating it. When he finished, he said, okay, give me the other one. Give me the other one. The Sahaba took it, took it out and gave it to him. Give it to the Prophet ﷺ. He ate also that one. He said, okay, give me the third one. Give me the third one. The third one? Where would you get the third one from? It's only two front shoulders, right? And the Prophet ﷺ loved the front shoulders, not the back, not the back portion, but the front. So he used his logics, which is logically okay also because only two would have. Rasulullah said that if you had not had questioned me and told me that, okay, O Prophet of Allah, there are only two front portion, there is not more than that. Rasulullah said, Allah would have, as long as I would have asked you to give it to me, Allah would have made that possible for you to continue to give to me. Allah would have made it possible for you to continue and it would have kept coming out from that pot, kept coming out from that pot. But because you ask me, and because you say that there are only two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closed the door of Barakah. The door of Barakah was closed, right? So if Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu would have said, Ya Rasulullah, dates are, are, are only comes on the tree in, in summer or not in winter, Allah would have also closed that door. But Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, he did not say that. He went directly to to the tree and he told the tree what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded it. And immediately the tree gave fresh dates. Immediately fresh dates. Fresh ripe dates came and he filled an entire basket. And he brought it back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he first he gave it to the companions who were very hungry. He said, you eat, you all have some. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu had, Umar radiallahu anhu had, Rasulullah had some, and also there were some remaining. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told Ali that, O oh Ali, take this remaining and, uh, and give it to my daughter Fatima radiallahu anha. She also haven't eaten for a few days. Take the remaining for and give it to her. Once there was, there was a lot of rain in Medina, a lot of rain. And it was so much of rain that the entire place was flooded. With water, and uh, it, it it became ver- it became you know very dangerous. So the Sahaba they went to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they said, Ya Rasulullah, can you make du'a to Allah for Allah to remove this rain from Medina to the suburbs of Medina and into the mountains? The Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he had a stick in his hand. He had a stick in his hand, and he pointed the stick towards the cloud. He pointed the stick towards the cloud. And do you know, you know, like if you have a piece of cloth and you have a scissors and you want to cut out the middle portion of this cloth, right? You want to cut the middle portion from the cloth. Like that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took the stick and he said, Allahumma hawalayna wa la alayna. And he made this, this ishara and this sign around the cloud. And the cloud came out, that portion where he made that sign around, came out from Medina and went and uh, went to the mountains and the suburbs of Medina and the rain fell over there. This was how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even even other other you know objects animate and inanimate objects you know knew of the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What didn't the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did for us? What didn't he do for us? Which stone was left unturned for the sake of this Ummah? Go today to Mecca and Medina and listen with the ears of Iman. And in the streets and in the alleys of Mecca and Medina, you will hear the cry of the Prophet ﷺ for this ummah. Go to Taif and stand on the mountains of Taif and you will hear the stones of Taif telling you of the story what took place with the most beloved of Allah's Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Taif, whereby he was pelted and pelted and pelted until the, his Mubarak body, the flesh from his body burst open and blood start oozing out from his body. Go to Taif and you will hear the echoes coming out from the mountains of Taif, what the Prophet, what the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through. He would fall down. The Prophet ﷺ would fall down and they would pick him up. The people of Taif, they would pick him up and they would let him go for miles and they would continue to pelt him. He would fall down and they would pick him up and let him go again and continue to pelt him for three miles. For three long miles. When 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was overtaken. He turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he made the dua, Allahumma inni ashku bathi da'fa quwwati wa qillata hilati wa hawani ala nas ila man takiluni. Oh Allah, to whom have you handed me over? To these ruffians? Look what these people have done to me. To whom have you handed me over? But then he said one thing, oh Allah, if you are, if you are not angry with me, then I have no worry. If you are not angry with me, O Allah, then I have no worry. I am prepared to accept whatever comes in my way. Have we forgotten the pelting of Taif? Have we forgotten the, where the Prophet ﷺ fell unconscious in Uhud? Have we forgotten that he tied stones on his stomach due to hunger? In the plains of Arafat, where the Prophet ﷺ stood on Jabal al-Rahmah with his hands with his hands stretched out in du'as when we go for hajj when we go and we go to Arafat and we make du'a how long is our du'a 10 minutes 15 minutes half an hour one hour two hours we get tired Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was constant in du'a for six hours he was in du'a before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for six hours until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh my Nabi, I have forgiven the oppressed of your ummah. Oh my Nabi, I have forgiven the oppressed of your ummah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Allah, that's not enough. Forgiving the oppressed from my ummah is not enough. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Allah, don't forgive the oppressed only. Oh Allah, you have the power to repay the oppressed from your treasures. You have the power to repay them from your treasures. Oh Allah, forgive also the oppressors of this ummah. Forgive also the oppressors of this ummah. And Arafah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he addressed us, he addressed the entire ummah till qiyamah. He addressed the entire ummah till qiyamah. This was the worry and the concern of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So much so that it is said on the day of qiyamah, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will intercede for the ummah, he will continue to go in Jahannam. He will continue to go in, and this is written in the tafsir of the ayah, وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to you with regards to your ummah until you become pleased. Allah will make you pleased with regards to your ummah. So, it is written that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will continue to go into Jahannam and take out his ummah from Jahannam. So much so that the Malik and the keeper of Jahannam will say, O Nabi of Allah, you haven't left any chance for Allah's anger on any of your ummati. You haven't left any chance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger for any ummati. Just as how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a universal prophet his worry and concern was also universal. How? How it was? Once the Prophet ﷺ was sitting and he saw the funeral of a non-Muslim passing by. The funeral of a non-Muslim. It was not the janazah of a Muslim. It was the funeral of a non-Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ looked at it and he began crying. He looked at the janazah and he began crying. Sahaba said, O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are weeping, you are crying. This is not the janazah of a Muslim. This is the janazah of a non-Muslim. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, isn't he another human being that died without iman? Isn't he another human being that died without iman? Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha, she used to narrate the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nights and she used to narrate his days how he used to be in the night and how he used to be in the day. How he used to cry, you know, for this ummah and how he will cry the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah for us, you and I. The Rabbi Allah have just passed. But should we only speak about the Nabi of Allah and the Rabbi Allah? No. His worry and his concern should be there in our hearts, what he had for us throughout our lives. Huh? One was that Rabbi Allah and one is today's Rabbi Allah. It's not about Rabbi Allah. It's, it's how the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given his entire life for this ummah. What he didn't do for this ummah. Huh? What he didn't do for this ummah. When all relationships will be of no avail whatsoever on the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah. Only one person, 
one person you will find saying, when everyone will be saying, Ya Rabbi Nafsi Nafsi, Ya Rabbi Nafsi Nafsi, only one person will be saying, Ya Rabbi Ummati Ummati. It is written that if a person will have, when Jahannam will be brought on the day of Qiyamah, it will be brought with a scream, a loud scream. It is said, if a person will have the a'mals like that of 70 anbiya, if a person will have the a'mal, the deeds like of 70 anbiya, 70 prophets of Allah, still that person will drop to his knees and beg for his own rescue on the day of Qiyamah. He will drop to his knees and beg for his own rescue on the day of Qiyamah. Who don't know what is the value of one salah in Mecca and Medina? Who don't know? We all of us know that. That when we go from here, what is the reward we get? To pray one salah in Mecca and Medina. 100,000 reward for one salah. One good deed in Medina 1,000 times. Yet, if you look at the graves of Sahaba, if you look at the graves of the companions of the Allah Ta'ala Ali Majma'een, they are scattered in the four corners of the world. They are scattered in the four corners of the world. Uqba bin Nafi' radiallahu anhu, he's in Algeria. Abu Lubaba al-Ansari, he's in Tunis. Bara bin Malik radiallahu anhu, he's in Asfahan. Abu Talha Ansari is in Rome. Abu Ayyub Ansari is in Istanbul in Turkey. Fadil ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, which is the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's in Syria. Khalid ibn Walid is in Syria. Bilal ibn Rabih radiallahu anhu, Damascus. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu in Damascus. Sharahbil bin Hassana in Jordan, Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah in Jordan, Mu'adh bin Jabal in Jordan, Ja'far bin Abi Talib, uh, Zayd bin Haritha, Abdurrahman, uh, Abdullah bin Rawaha in Muta. Huh? Not in Mecca and Medina, in different places of the world, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Sahaba made their graves in different places of the world. What? Why? Taking the message of the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Nabi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, that which we have to follow every day in our lives, every aspect in our life that we do. Not in one month of the year, but in every day, every single thing we do in life, if we bring the, the life of the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give us success in this life and the akhirah. One incident and I will conclude. It is said, you know, one person, he had practiced one sunnah. One sunnah this person practiced throughout his life. What was that sunnah? That whenever he does something, he would do it with his right hand. And you also should practice it, inshallah. Even though you are a lefty, do the, the things with your right hand, inshallah. What needs to be done with the left hand is fine. But be in the habit of doing it in the, with your right hand. It is said that this person will be called on the day of Qiyamah. And his a'mals will be weighed. His deeds will be weighed. And he did not live a good life. He wouldn't have lived a good life. And decision will be made for him to go into the fire of hell. So it will be told that give the, give the, 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 the a'mal of this man, give, give him his book, give him his kitab in his left hand. Because he, 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 today he's a failure. Today he's a failure. He didn't live a good life. He didn't pass. His scale of, de of bad deeds were heavy. So the angels were, will, will go to give him his records of his deeds in his left hand. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see in that day, what are you doing? Stop. Why are you giving this man his book of deeds in his left hand? The angel will say, oh Allah, he, he's a person of Jahannam. <clears throat> Today he's a failure. He didn't live a good life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the angel that this man in the dunya, he did everything with his right hand. Today he will not receive his book in his left hand, he would receive it in his right hand. He would receive his book also in his right hand, not in his left hand. So when and what amal can come to our rescue, we don't know. When and how and when, we don't know. So my dear respected brothers and elders, obedience to Allah, obedience to Allah, the way shown to by, by the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if we bring these two aspects in our lives, inshallah, our dunya will become one of prosperity. Our qabr, inshallah, will be one of bliss, inshallah. And in akhirah, Allah will put us, in, inshallah, in Jannat al-Firdaus. Um, before you, before the sunnah or adhan? Before the adhan, inshallah, we just have one announcement here, as you have heard it also last week. We have an Umrah trip going from the 18th to the 28th of March, inshallah, during spring break. If anyone is interested, please contact me. It's a very good trip, inshallah. The cost is very minimal also, affordable by anyone. Um, and so if you, it's a time when kids have spring break and it's all for them. So if you're interested, inshallah, there are some flyers by the, the donation box. You can take one and then you can, you can inform us and call us and we can make your arrangements, inshallah. Jazakumullah.